Good morning everyone, I'm Eddie Wu, I'm a mathematics teacher at Cherrybrook Technology High School and welcome to Morning Maths with Mr Wu. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I hope we learn something together and even have a little bit of fun. Now I want to acknowledge country. Right now I'm on Darig land and Cherrybrook Technology High School um, owes its existence to these people who the traditional custodians in the land have cared for this environment over thousands of years and for all the lands that you are tuning in from, um, I hope that you pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging who are the reason why we can meet and live and learn on these wonderful lands. Now today we're going to be doing a bit of learning and I want to say to all the parents out there, thanks for getting your kids logged in. You're going to need some materials to do the learning today. Um, you'll need some paper like you know a, a spare sheet or a book, something that you can write and draw on. And you also need something to write with, but as an added bonus, if you've just got like a pencil or a pen, I'd love it if you could try and get some different colors. Like if you've got um, a colored pencil set or even some markers, anything you can use uh, to show some difference there. If you do have just a lead pencil, we can make it work. I'll show you how later, but we'll come to that. Now, what we're going to be doing today is having a think about how mathematics is all around us. And I'm going to give you one particular example. Now, I have something here, a bit of a prop to help me illustrate. This is a, uh, a map of the world, as you can see. Um, I picked this particular one because, well, there's actually lots of maths that you can see on it. I'm going to bring it just a little bit closer so you can see it a bit more clearly. Um, it has all these different countries on it, and before I explain the particular maths we're going to have a think about here, um, I'd love you at home to uh, talk to the person next to you if you've got someone nearby, and think about what kind of maths could you spot in a map like this. Uh, we could do so many different explorations, maybe you're thinking about world population, maybe you're thinking about the area of these different countries. Um, I think it's appropriate at a time like this that we think globally. Everyone around the world is in the same kind of situation we are, trying our best to be responsible and stay healthy and well. So I think it's fitting that we have a look at the entire world map here. Um, you can see, let me move around to the other side here. You've got kind of the uh, uh, American continents over here. Now, what is the particular bit of maths that I want to draw out of this map for you? Well, it's, you might have had a bit of a clue before when I told you the materials that we needed for this lesson. It's something that you might not think is very mathematical, and that is color. Um, there are lots of different colors on this map. I've seen lots of black and white maps before, and I'm sure you have too. And they're useful, but color maps we can see much more clearly, because we can tell the countries apart. Now, let me bring this even closer. I'm going to come back around to this side. If I show you, say, here we go, um, you can see Europe in there. Hopefully it's, it's big enough that you can see it reasonably clearly. And um, if you have a close look, I want you to see how many colors you can count on this map. And I really mean all of the colors you can see. For instance, um, you know, um, the water here is in blue. You can see Norway in green, uh, Sweden in yellow, Finland in purple. Uh, this is the Russian Federation over here in this kind of salmon pink color. Um, I'm counting something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven colors. Maybe, maybe one or two more that I haven't spotted there. Um, at least seven colors are on this map. And I guess that makes sense because um, there are hundreds of countries on this map and we want to make sure that we can tell them all apart. But my question to all of you is, how many colors do we actually need to color this map? Did we need seven? Can we actually do it with fewer? Now, this is where your materials are going to come in handy. If you've got a, a blank piece of paper there or a blank page in your workbook, underneath your heading, um, I want you to draw with me some imaginary maps. So if you are not very good like I am at drawing like the exact things around, like I'm really terrible at drawing a map of Australia because it's like a weird, funny, awkward shape, then don't worry about that. We're just going to do some imaginary maps, okay? So firstly, let's just kind of like our, um, our big map that I was showing you before, let's just have a uh, imaginary map here that's going to include our world, okay? Now in our world I want us to draw some imaginary countries with imaginary borders. Now before we get too crazy and complicated, let's do a simple one to start with. I'm going to challenge you to draw a map, any map, 
with just four lines, okay? They don't have to be straight lines. Um, they can be wiggly and all that kind of thing. Uh, but let's just use four to start with so this doesn't go too complicated on us too fast. So if I draw something like this, let's try. There's one line. There's two. There's three. And let me put in a fourth one over here. All right. Now, you can imagine this might be like what I did when I showed you the map close up and I held it close to the camera. Um, this might be a zoomed in portion of a map and that's fine. Now my question to you is, how many different colors do we need to color this map? Now, we used four lines, right? And maybe your map looks very similar to mine or maybe it looks completely different. It's one of the cool things about mathematics. We can explore all different kinds of situations. In this map, I can count there are a different number of, well, I guess we could call them countries, different regions on the map that are separated by borders. I'm counting, let's uh, do a count here. I'll use, stay with the black here. I count one up here, two over here, three, four, and then five. Now, there are five sections on the map, so I guess I could use five different colors. Um, one color for each section, and then they would definitely all be different, and we wouldn't have any sections of the map that are next to each other, which are the same color. But it actually turns out, I don't need five different colors, even though there are five sections on the map. And I'll show you, and I want you to see if you can do this on your own piece of paper as well. Let's pick a color, like say I've got red here, okay? Um, if I take, let's do these in order, I'll start at the top over here. If I take the first section and color this in red, I'm just gonna do some lines like this so I don't use too much ink. Here's my first section. Now, before I jump onto the second one here, I know that's gotta be a different color. But before I do that, I notice that there are other sections on the map that I could color with this same color and still not have two sections that are next to each other, which are identical, right? You can see, have a look, on mine and perhaps on yours, you've got another section here. I could do either section three, or country three, I guess, or country four. I could do either of them in red and I would still be okay. They won't be up against country one and so everything would still look all right. So I'm gonna do country number three. Let's do that guy. Okay, so, so far, I've already used one color to do two different sections. So I already know I need less than five. How much less than five? Now, if you are um, <laughs> unable to find some color pencils at home or color textures, that's okay. Instead of using a new color for the next thing, maybe you wanna have lines that go in a different direction or you could put dots or any kind of pattern so you can distinguish these sections from each other. Let's keep on going around the map. I'm up to section two now, so here's my blue marker. I'm gonna do this in this direction over this way. Now, as I color this in, and perhaps as you look at your own map, you can see, just like before, um, there's another section of the map that I could color with the same color and still not have it touching my country number two over here. Uh, which one is it? Well, in this case, it's country number four, right? It doesn't touch country number two, so I can use the same color and everything will be fine. Let's color this guy in blue. Okay, fantastic. Now. I've got one last section to do, and I can't do it in the same colors that I've already used, um, red and blue, because country number five, it's a bit unusual actually, country number five, it touches every other country. So therefore, I definitely have to use a different color for it. So thankfully, I've got an orange marker here, and um, I'm going to color it in horizontally like so. And hopefully you can see what I've got now is a finished map. I've used all of the different uh, colors that I needed, but it wasn't five, it was only three. And maybe when you've had a go with your map as well, you can see that you didn't need as many colors as you had countries. You could use fewer of them. Now, it turns out, we actually never really need five colors to do a map. And we can prove this. I mean, no matter how crazy you make your map look. Let's, uh, let's do a more complicated one now. I'll draw it over here. Okay, I, uh, I limited you to four lines this time. 
uh, last time rather. This time, let's just go to town. Let's put as many lines on there as we like. The only thing that I would suggest is make sure that you actually make the countries big enough to color, okay? Because otherwise, um, this would be very, very difficult for you to see whether it's going to work, okay? Uh, let's have a go at putting a bunch of crazy lines on here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put one right across the middle there, um, one up there, I'm gonna put a country inside a country, that's a bit weird, but it does happen. Put one there, another line here. Uh, let's put, let's do something weird. Let's put a bunch of countries here in a row, put another one there, and then um, I'll put one here, which kind of touches that. All right, now. You may still be drawing your map, that's totally fine. Take as much time as you like. This can go weird and crazy and you can put lots of lines here. I mean, you might think, wow, that is weird. Is there ever a country inside another country? The answer is uh, yes, there are. And even if you're not doing countries, you can think a little more locally. In Australia, we have the ACT. If you're from the Australian Capital Territory, hello. Um, the ACT, of course, is completely enclosed by New South Wales. So um, these kinds of things happen in maps all the time. Now, as we have a look here, uh, boy, I should have checked this beforehand. There's so many different regions, I've lost count actually. Let's have a quick have a look and uh, see if we can do this. I've got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh my gosh, 12 countries. How am I going to color this? Now, before we have a go at coloring this, I want you to notice, because unfortunately I can't see all of the maps that you guys have been creating, but um, I can guess that some of you will have encountered this problem. As you go about coloring, you might start to use one color, then another one, and then realize, oh no, I'm starting to use lots and lots of different colors here, and um, you know, maybe, the, maybe I do need, you know, like seven colors like I did on here. Well, I'm gonna show you we only need the number of colors that I have here in my hand. I've got, uh, let me come a bit closer, um, I've got four markers here, and in fact, I even need, don't really even need all four because I can use white as one of my colors. I'm gonna show you that we only need four colors to do any crazy different map. Uh, let me just demonstrate it on this one. Okay, now, to work out which color to start with, or I should say which region and which country to start with, um, rather than doing it like this and just going one, two, three, four, five, I'm actually gonna to suggest to you to look for a particular kind of place. I want you to start with the kind of country that touches the most other countries. Let me say that again. What you wanna search for is the country, let's use a darker color for writing some words there. There we go. Look for the country that touches the most or the highest number of other countries. Sorry, this is a bit messy. Now, why would we start with this? Hopefully, you'll start to realize why as we go. Um, now, when I have a look here, I'm just doing this very quickly. I didn't plan this map or anything like that. So I'm guessing it's gonna be a country somewhere near the middle, right? Like country number five, you can see it's, it touches uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six different countries. So that's a pretty good candidate. Um, down here, this one touches a lot as well, but I don't think it's as many. One, two, three, four, okay? So I'm gonna start with number five. So let's have a go at this one. Uh, like before, I'll start with red, okay? Now, once you've got this guy colored in, okay? I again wanna to suggest to you, don't just do this in random order. Let's see if there's any other countries we can color with this one before we have to give up, okay? Um, which ones can we do? Well, apart from all those ones that touch, I can do the other countries so long as they're not bordering this one. Uh, let's start with number one over here, that landlocked one that looked a bit like the ACT. Let's color this one in. I can use red there. Okay, that one's all good. And you can see I can continue this process. I can keep searching for countries that I can color with this um, that uh, you know, mean I can still use red and minimize the number of colors that I'm using. So I'm gonna give you a second to do that while I catch up and have a go over here. And while I do this um, and continue coloring, um, for all of the people at home who are a little bit older, perhaps you're in year 10 or year 11 or year 12, I want you to think about 
Does this sound like a complicated bit of maths? Does it look very, you know, intricate and like a difficult bit of calculus or trigonometry? Doesn't look all that complicated, right? But there's actually some deep mathematics in here which we'll reveal shortly. All right, now I'm searching for my next one which touches lots of other countries. I said this one touches one, two, three, four. This one, ooh, this one touches quite a few. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do this one, six, all right. So hopefully you're making some progress and my challenge to you, like I showed you before, is see if you can do this with just four colors or fewer. Okay, um, I can do that one, which means uh, eight's okay. There we go. Um, three is okay. Like so. Hmm, where else can I go? All right, 12. That doesn't touch anything. Let's have got that. And I think... I might be done for this color. I think that's finished. Okay, uh, let's use green this time. All right, where am I gonna go? Okay, now I think, I think I'm actually gonna go up here. Let's go to 11. And I'm being a bit sneaky, like I said before, even though I do have a fourth color here, I've got an orange marker, I'm actually gonna use white as my final color because what that means is, at this point, I think I'm actually finished. I think I have done every little area here and I've used, as I mentioned before, a grand total of four colors. Now, this is not an accident. I didn't bring four whiteboard markers with me um, unintentionally. I knew that I could only use four colors. And the reason why is this wonderful piece of maths called the four color theorem. In maths, when we say theorem, what we mean is actually uh, something that we have proven to be true. No matter which way you try something, you know, you might have heard of Pythagoras' theorem. That's to do with right angled triangles. And no matter what right angled triangle you have, Pythagoras' theorem, uh, for the parents in the room who are remembering this kicking around in their memory, a squared plus b squared, which are the two shorter sides squared. If you add them together, you get c squared. No matter what right angle triangle you start with. Well, the four color theorem, it says that no matter what map you start with, you could have a fairly simple one, a complicated one, even one as crazy as our actual world that we live in, you only need four colors. And so I said before, if you were a bit older, well, what does this have to do with some of the more advanced mathematics that I've been learning? Well, if you're a year 11 or 12 student who studies mathematics standard, and there are several thousand of you around New South Wales, and there are equivalent ones in different jurisdictions, then I want you to think about a part of mathematics called networks. Networks is a name for uh, a part of mathematics that is also called graph theory. And if you think about every map that you've drawn as a network, you can start to see this is a graph theory problem. Um, this map over here that we created, for example, uh, one, two, three, four, five. I could say each country represents a node on the map. Let's draw it up like this. One, two, three, four, and then five. And then I can show the borders between the different countries as the different links between them, as the different um, paths that I can take through this network. Um, one, for example, it connects to five. One also connects to two. And these are the only two countries that it borders. So I can finish with all of those different branches there. Let's have a look at two. Two connects to one. Like I said, it connects to five and it connects to three. Uh, three, I've already done the connection to two, it connects to five and it also connects to four. Four connects to five as well and then that is all of its connections. And as you can see, five connects to every other one like we showed before. And what we're showing here is we can understand, all right, so long as two vertices on here, two of the nodes are neighboring, as long as they have different colors, we will be able to create a map that's equivalent to that, because really all these wiggly wobbly borders don't matter, it's just whether they share a connection or not. So, as a bit of challenge for all of you, I'd love you to go away and try and draw some more maps. Um, we know, according to the four color theorem, you only need four colors, no matter what map you create. But can you create a map that requires just two colors? 
What about a map that creates, that you can create that requires exactly three, uh, like this one over here? Have fun with that, good luck exploring mathematics, and have a great day everyone. Stay safe at home. Bye.